So obviously we don't speak English or Spanish or whatever to each other, but we do speak to each other. And it's highly important to talk to your animals, to let them know you're coming back, especially if it's a rescue. We talked about that. Let them know you're going away and you'll be back. You're going to uh, let them know that you love them and you're just going through something, that your energy is off because there's stress in your life, but it has nothing to do with them and you love them like you would a child, right? Welcome to the Spirit and Soul Healing Podcast, where we speak about all things related to spirituality, soul level healing, intuitive guidance, frequencies, and much more. I'm Amy Sikarski, licensed vocational nurse, past life hypnotherapist, master intuitive energy healer, and a clairvoyant physical channel. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Spirit School Online, where we offer courses in energy therapy, free guided meditations, courses and information around learning to connect in with your spirit guides, and much more. You can find me at amysikarski.com and offerings at spiritschoolonline.com. Hi everyone, welcome to this special episode of the Spirit and Soul Healing Podcast. I am so happy today to bring our guest on, Rochelle. I had an amazing experience with her a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, oh girl, you have to come on the podcast, please. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit about Rochelle, um, she does intuitive readings for animals and also for people. She uses cards, visions, and energy to get clarity on her healing messages that come through from the divine. And this includes health scannings, which I want to hear more about, um, communicating with animals, and her intuitive coaching and mediumship. So we will put her bio below with the link so you can connect with her. And I'm just so excited to get this conversation started. <laughs> so thank you for being here, Michelle. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I think you're awesome too. I'm really happy that we met. There's no accidents. Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So Rochelle really was a blessing to me. I was in between two trips and our little dog was having some issues and he was missing me waking up all hours of the night. And so I really wanted to just you know, check in on him. And it was such a gift that we connected. A friend recommended you and so there's so many services that you offer. I figure like, let's just start with my story with the animals okay. because mm -hmm. that was so profound. And I just, you know, just want to highlight this experience. So I called you and we made a connection for my dog, right. but right before, so Bosco, if y'all know me, you know, little Bosco, um, right as we were getting ready to set up for our FaceTime video conference this cat that i've been taking care of for about two years he's a feral kitty um or was i'm gonna say uh onyx came to the front yard to the front door and often i'll feel him i'll just get this message in my heart and i go look out the window and there he is so he came right for our reading and we sat outside and then all three of the cats could sense your energy and just came like they were all over, you know, wherever. And they just came over to see what's going on. It's like, they could really feel and mm -hmm. tune in with you. I don't know if you remember when you saw Onyx, if I you want to share with everybody your impressions. So Onyx came literally felt like came out of nowhere. I said to you yeah. something like a Panther, right. But I, but then the more I watched Onyx, I'm like, this is an old soul. This has been around for a long time. I think that you two have had lives together before you know we met mm -hmm. and um it was hanging out under the window and I didn't know that was the window where you do your work right but it seemed like it was protecting you it was there to make sure everything was going okay and that you know your messages that came through that the cat I felt like was like processing it you know and it was part of your almost your gifts like it came with your gifts right Mm -hmm. but it definitely wanted to protect you. So, and I kept watching the cat and it was so much deeper than just the cat hanging out in the neighborhood, right? It had so right. much presence and so much energy and it was powerful. And um, like the other cat they had that was laying there that told me that wanted, you know, 
its own space and you know just wanted to lay around that was very cat-like right but this one just had like this wild energy right it had been around for so long it was like part of your soul and um so it wanted to be heard it wanted you to know that it wanted you to know why it was there what it was doing how come it would kind of stay in the distance but always be there when you would look out like you can feel it like you just mm -hmm. said and as soon as we started communicating with the cat and started um relaying its message to you and to your husband right and to yeah. the other animals they need to know why this cat's here too so there's you know they're like there's enough already why is this one coming to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it wouldn't come towards you because it needed to be heard first right right but as soon as we re relayed excuse me that message to you the cat came right over right and then started rubbing on your hand let you pet it yeah the first time ever he let he yeah. walked up to me and touched me which he has been at a distance. Um, we did get him some medical care. So we had to do like the trap uh, a few months ago. And so I was also a little nervous, like, you know, if his own ex only experience with humans would have been scary or how that went about. Mm -hmm. But this was the first time he interacted with me in such a way. About like a month prior to this reading, he started meowing at my husband and myself, like when we go out for walks. So I could tell he wanted to make a connection, but he would never come close. And he certainly hadn't touched me. So as, as you were just tuning into him, he walked over and I was, I mean, my jaw dropped. <laughs> I was like, it was so awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It it's, was amazing. It was so amazing. And I just want to say that when I do this, especially with animals who don't have their own voice and I can hear them so clearly and feel them. And sometimes they're so desperate to let you know why they're there or what they need or just one little message, right? Mm -hmm. And without that, they act crazy because they, I think they, they feel like if I keep acting like this, they're gonna still, they're gonna wonder and they're gonna keep checking and they're gonna try to figure out how to figure it out, right? So if they right. let go of that behavior, you're gonna stop wondering because now it seems normal. So people think, oh, my dog won't stop doing this or they're being erratic. And then sometimes I'll do a reading and it's just one little message, right? Sometimes they're really worried about their owner and they can't stop doing that until they hear their owner say, I'm okay. It's just been tough. And I think we had that experience as well. And um, I want you to know this cat isn't so much afraid of humans. It's, almost, it's very selective with mm -hmm. humans. It's very, it is around your house for you. Okay. And there's a lot of times there's every animal kind of has their person. They might like a lot of people, but there's always their person. And that's the connection that's from the divine. And that's the soul connection. And they're there to travel and go on this journey with you and enhance your life and teach you. And sometimes it's unconditional love. Sometimes it's just to, to stop and breathe. Right? right. And sometimes it's to, to get you out of your head so you can have a moment of peace. There's so many reasons, but this cat is here for you, right? This is your animal. This is your cat. This is, you've traveled lifetimes with this cat. Right. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. needed you to know why it was here before it could come to you, because then if it just acted like a regular cat, it would be seen like a house cat. But this right. cat is fierce. It's I mean, yeah, really He's special, really is. <laughs> very special, special in his own way. Right. Yeah. He has his, his purpose. So, yeah, he does. And since that interaction, it was slow, but I just sat with him last night. So only a matter of weeks. And he's learning how to be loved. You mentioned that in the reading. He just, you know, how to be loved, how to be heard. And he was, do, he does this thing where it's like he's letting himself rub against me, but it's my aura. So Aww. he doesn't touch the physical body to start. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put my hand out and then he dives in for a pet and he's learning how to be petted. You can tell that it's mm -hmm. like, it's awkward. It doesn't feel so natural and comfortable to him but he's doing such a good job. He got so excited last night. He did like 30 to 40 pets. <laughs> Yay, I'm just, so excited. Yeah, it was such a, a magical experience. And I noticed a few weeks ago when I did go out, like he brushed upon me to get a pet and then I instigated a pet and he didn't like that. So he swatted at me and <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, oh gosh, you know, so I was a little hesitant, but what I do is I just fill my aura with love and I'd send like energy, like Reiki. And then that buffers any of this, like, you know, hesitancy or questioning am I like for me, even like, is he going to smack me and claw me, you know? Um, but so last night I was doing that as well. And he's getting to be so comfortable. I think we had an understanding about two weeks ago, I was going to go in the house 
And I told him, okay, I'm going to go in the house. And by the way, I can tell like telepathically speak to him now, just no words, just energy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just telling him, thank you. And he knows his name now, which I didn't know if he really quite understood that even Mm -hmm. two months ago, but I sent him some love from my heart. And I was, I felt this electric shock in my aura where my physical body then felt it. And I like jumped, he connected or sent something back and it took me by surprise. So we've connected now. And like you mentioned, there's something so ancient and it's also exciting for me in a way of like just to see where this relationship leads and what he has to show with me show to me you know so he's definitely selective he comes around when he wants to I'll feel him I'll look outside and there he is Mm -hmm. and he like goes and disappears I'm like (laughs) like for days sometimes so Uh, But that was just such a profound experience. And so I thought I really would love to have you on because that significantly changed my life. And it was a gift I wasn't even really expecting because I had asked for you to come on to speak with our dog. And then you did this beautiful reading for all the animals in our home. Um, So I want to thank you for that and um, share with everybody also that what you mentioned to me after is that you also offer all kinds of readings. I do. I, I just, can I, do, I just want to retouch on a couple of things that you said, because yeah. they're really, really important when we, it comes to our animals. So obviously we don't speak English or Spanish or whatever to each other, but we do speak to each other. And it's highly important to talk to your animals, to let them know you're coming back, especially if it's a rescue. We talked about that. Let mm-hmm. them know you're going away and you'll be back. You're going to uh, let them know that you love them and you're just going through something that your energy is off because there's stress in your life, but it has nothing to do with them. And you love them like you would a child, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't want, I want people to, I don't want people to think that they um, can't speak to them. I want them to know they can, right? And like you said, it's energetic. The energy is really everything, right? If you come with love and you explain sometimes why you're off because they do worry about us and dogs sometimes more than cats because cats kind of like, you know, yeah. they are, they're the most a wild animal that we domesticated because we don't know what to do or how to understand them. So we just let them be with dogs. We train them, sit, stay, feed them our food, right? A cat just kind of hangs out with us, but we haven't done a lot of domestication for cats. So they really are kind of a wild energy, which is so amazing to watch them because you kind of get nature at home. And then you mentioned Reiki. Now animals absorb Reiki and energy healing so much easier and because they're such a pure form of energy. So all of those things are amazing. I just want everybody to know that just touch them and put your energy in them and love them and talk to them. And it's so important because if you really do that, you'll start to understand and hear them and you're not crazy because you are hearing them, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just want to touch on that because that's really what I do. I just kind of open the channel up and I let them talk to me and how I figured out I had some of these other gifts, which is for lack of a better word, medical intuitive is that I work in a pet store and I had a cat come in, used to come in on the leash. And I put my hand over the cat and I could see that there was an issue in their kidneys Mm -hmm. and I could see there was a a blockage in a backup and um, also behaviors due to this ailment. And so I said to the customer, you know, I felt very off, but I had to say it because I can't control when I have these feelings. Is this what something's going on with your cat? And I told them, they said, we just got back from the vet. This is exactly what they said. Right. So, and over the years, I do work with a homeopath and he calls me all the time he's a vet as well. You know, what do you see in this animal? What do you see in this person? Cause he, he works with people too. And it's just gotten stronger and stronger. And this is one of the things that I was trying to explain to you, but it's hard. I, if you're in front of me, I can put my hand over you. Cause I, I feel a lot in my hands. I see through my hands. Um, but I can, I can also channel into somebody if they say, can you look into this person? I'll, I'll scan their body and I see colors like you see colors, right? Different colors mean different uh, types of feelings. It could be pain. It could be a serious ailment up into maybe even cancer, right? But I see the organ. I don't know what they're called. I just say it looks like this and it has this. So I, you know, I, I'm not a doctor, but I do see things, right? I see pain. I see things coming up. I see the reason emotionally that it's going on, what's attached to it and how, how can we work on it? And the big thing about the readings that I do is that I don't just go and say, this is going on or this is what happened. I always do love and light and I stay in positive. There's no, oh my gosh, this is going to happen to you. I don't mm-hmm. believe in that. I believe our choices are are 
how we direct ourselves in the future. So I don't tell you in the future, you're going to meet Mr. Right, or this is going to happen. I say right now, if we take this path and we work on ourselves and we do the healing we need to do, this is a possibility moving forward, but we prolong it based on our choices. Right. But, um, so I do present day readings. Um, but the medical thing is really powerful and it's really amazing. And I, and I've helped some people with their animals, not knowing what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. There was a dog who had was running in the backyard and actually fell into a, this little hole and hurt their leg, but they could, they didn't know what happened. So I said, is there a hole in the backyard? And I, and, and, and she's like, well, there, there's one we just dug up. I said, the dog fell and tweaks, tweaked its leg. And that's why it's walking like that. And she was like, he was playing over there. And it, it surprises me, believe me, as much as it surprises mm-hmm. the person I'm talking to. Cause I don't know. Yeah. I like, I'm like, looking around who's telling me this you know it's like it's pretty interesting and um I'm very grateful that the divine and spirit and and angels and all of that speak through me I'm just a vessel I don't take it on as you know I'm very humble when it comes to this and I just really want to help anybody who wants to heal and move forward with their life with their pet's life who want to connect to the people of past it's it's such a blessing that I'm excited and I get something out of every single time when you contacted me and I did that reading for you. I was so nervous. I haven't, I haven't done one for animals in a while. And I think I cried in the reading, right? I mean, I cry. it's so amazing that you have this. And then your dog going to the sitter and your husband getting sleep. It, it's yeah. like, it, it warms my heart. I can't explain to you. I'm actually trying to keep myself calm because I'm very animated. <laughs> <laughs> I get very excited about this. It's so cool. It's like, oh my gosh, you know? Yeah. And I learned something from every single person I talk to you. It's just, it's just so divinely guided to help heal. And we're all this soul tribe and soul family that we're helping each other heal by what we do in our experiences, you know? Right. So yeah, that was a long winded answer, but. Oh, I loved it. Thank you for the stories too. I, I just get so like fascinated by, you know, how expansive this really can go. And also in that one conversation, one interaction can shift completely the energy and the relationship and the path forward and all of it, the whole dynamic. So for little Bosco, yeah, he was missing me. He's getting older. And so what we, we did is we got him a little sitter for my second trip and then it worked out beautifully. And she was so attentive to him and it was exactly what he needed. He was such a calm little guy when I got home. So that really, really helped. Um, And it's just amazing. I feel like a lot of us have gifts and some are definitely stronger than others, but I love how you're just explaining, you know, what it's like to work with the animals, because some people might question, am I really listening or hearing? Is that what they're really saying? And, and yeah, you know, Mm -hmm. trust yourself. Cause if you don't practice, you might not know that you can do that. And then if you Mm -hmm. doubt yourself, well, that puts a big block on it. So flow with it and just see. Have you, have you always been able to communicate with animals then, or, you know, I don't, I know that when I was young, when I was very young, maybe five or six, my mom was very into energy. We had blue vases for healing water and we had all this stuff going on in my house. And she came to me one time, she said, put your hand on my shoulder. And I'm like, okay. She goes, okay, you're going to heal mommy's shoulder because it's hurting. And I was little and I'm like, okay. She goes, and I want you to know this is what you're going to do now. And this is who you are. You're a healer. Right. And so I was like, okay. (laughs) And, um, but then she made me watch this movie called resurrection. That was all about this woman who would take people's ailments on and, and then she would process them and she would release them and she would say, you know, heal people. And she would make me watch it over. She goes, I want you to watch this. And then animals always were attracted to me. And I didn't really realize that I had this, but I did see spirits. So that was my, probably my first thing. Very Mm -hmm. young. I would see spirits. They would be all around. And I was just like, okay and then eventually it got a little scary at first because I was getting bombarded with it yeah and then I went to a circle a shaman circle and he was speaking Spanish and and I was just standing there and I was like okay this is new and he walked over to me says don't be afraid they just want you to heal them so they can go to the other side and I was like why does he know that why does he know what I'm going through it was really powerful so I was you know I shut down for a little while because it was a lot to handle and I had to process and understand and then I opened a shop for other people who did readings and I just was down the whole time they're doing readings I'm downloading and the and the clients were like why aren't you doing the reading right and then people came in like oh you're here good we've been waiting for you and I'm like what's happening in this community it was a community of healers right and I was just like okay so I just started doing it and 
I was working in the pet store and I was noticing I would put my hands and I would see what where the rescue was before it ended up in the shelter, what happened to it, what the person looked like who abandoned it. I started seeing all these things, all these messages, and I was helping people find out what happened to animals who, and not that I want to talk about, that had been abused before the shelter. I was able mm-hmm. to see and give them direction on where to go to find these people because they need to be held accountable. That's not an acceptable behavior. Right. No. So, um, so not always, I've always had something. I just really had to develop it. And, and I want to say one thing is that, like you said, everybody has gifts. And I think the number one thing to know is that be confident in your messages, be confident in what you're hearing. Um, we all have said, oh, I knew that was going to happen. I didn't listen to myself, mm, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. So when I work with people, I say, well, what is your gut saying? and stay out of here and and listen to here. And then we work on having um, confidence in what our gut's saying and believing in ourselves. And when you start to believe in yourself, that's really when you can see clearly, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, it's so powerful. And it's so, and when you become humble and grateful and we know we're a tribe and we're not just us, we're not alone, we're not unique, we're not doing this whole mission solo. We couldn't do it without each other. You know, this is, it's such a powerful, loving, amazing thing. I was not able to accept the love around me before it was scary for me. And now I just like, we just give love back and forth. And I just, it's amazing, you know, and animals are such a pure form of love. And to be able to give them a voice is just really powerful. I know I've said that already, but it is, it's incredible. It is. You know, Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I haven't, I think I probably, I mean, obviously we probably all have had it, but developing it over the years and believing that I was really seeing what I was seeing probably in the last with animals, probably in the last like seven years. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, absolutely. Everything you're saying, I agree with. And when you're talking about the rescues, it's like, that's what you were able to tune in for us with Mimi is her, her rescue um, where she was before. And, and it really helped me because I felt that she needed some special care and understanding Mm -hmm. and, you really picked up on that straight away. Plus gave, you know, the additional information. And, and that's one thing to share is that the messages come through and then you share them, even if they don't make sense right away, because sometimes they will to the person receiving mm-hmm. obviously. And if not in that moment, then maybe the next day or a couple of weeks out, but it's about, I feel, you know, showing up in service, that love, that you're, that you're expressing how we all are coming together in a space of love to support one another and then letting the divine just, you know, like really assist and hold that space for the, the transmissions of energy and the messages to come through. And that's so incredible that your mom, I mean, she was just so in tune. And do you feel that you would have been as connected? She really supported that for you, right? The healing Mm -hmm. Was, did that run in your family? So my, my, um, my great aunt, she would, she was, um, definitely a medium. Uh, okay. We would have dinner and she's like, Frank's here. He wants to let you guys know, you know, that he saw you the other day. Doing, and, <laughs> and we're like, where's Frank? <laughs> you know? But she just talked like they were all there all the time. And my dad has this, the medical thing. He'll say, I know when people are really sick. I know what, you know, and now that he knows about what I'm doing, he's like, you know, I have it too. I said, I know that. I've been watching wow. you for years. <laughs> yeah. But my great aunt, when she passed, literally as she was passing, she said, okay, Rochelle, now I'm passing this to you. You have to take over for me. And it's funny because my mom passed and then my aunt passed five months later. That's when everything got really strong, right? So that wow. that was actually ten years ago. So that's when I really started feeling everything. But I didn't, I didn't define it. I didn't really grasp it. I just was like, whoa! I knew I had it years and years ago. People would come up to the table, and I would see like where they came from, what happened in their country. You know, I would see all this stuff. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> just don't want to order some Thai food right now. <laughs> you know? But um, but uh, when they passed, it really I had no option. There was no, you know, and and that's okay because this is a choice. I mean that that I love that I get to make daily, you know, yeah. that I mm-hmm. love to, you know, I had to learn. I'm very direct. Like you said, the messages come out no matter what. I'm going to be as right. honest as probably the most honest you've seen when you come to, you know, when you come with to readings, excuse me. Mm-hmm. But, and that's something that people say all the time. She's direct. She'll tell you what you want to hear and not want to hear. Right. And then yeah. we'll work on a solution. And it's really important not to throw some information at somebody and then say, have a nice day. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. something that you did for me. When you gave me my reading, you gave me all this wonderful information and you were honest with me as well. 
And then at the end you said, and this is what we're going to do. And it's just, it's like start and finish, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like a hug, right? Yeah. You put one arm around, it's the information, the other arm around, because we could have a solution right. and it's beautiful, right? So we want to give tools and the tools are usually what I've been through and what I know had worked for me in the past, right? Yeah. So it's nice because what I get most of the time when I'm done with readings is that they feel grounded, they feel relieved, they feel like they can breathe. And I actually watch them. They come in like, and then at the end, their shoulders are down and they're just like so relaxed and it's so rewarding. It's so important for me, you know, because I have a little bit of a, a people pleasing thing and it, <laughs> it's so rewarding <laughs> to watch them calm down. So, right. Yeah, you're caring, you're a healer, you're, you're really connected and conscious about, about everything, like the energy and being able to sense what's happening with the person that you're working with and then what's happening in spirit around and all the aspects that tie into that. And so when you, you mentioned a minute ago about when you were doing your, when you do the intuitive medical and you feel, and you'll feel like, okay, something's off of, you know, this organ or this part of the body but you're able to see what it's related to mm. is that uh -huh. so how does that work for you so I'll give you an example um today somebody was calling me about having some they had some blisters on their arm they weren't sure what it was but it was their arm was just not working it was kind of numbing but hurting at the same time and you know it's depending on the side but it's, it's an emotional attachment right he, this person i know i work with he has a fear of letting go, right? Mm -hmm. He has a fear of receiving also, but he holds on to his fear. Fear is the main word in this, right? Okay. So he keeps having ailments that are attached to fear. Certain organs are attached to fear, right? A lot of times cancer is attached to anger, right? Uterus is attached to old hurts and wounds from partners or relationships, right? So there's different parts of the body. So those are things that I learned, but also it will download for me, you know, mm -hmm. what happened? To you why you know they'll say oh my chest hurts and they oh my heaven no no this happened the other day because i can see what happened that relates to that pain they're having because they didn't express their emotions right it's so important people say stress can cause a heart attack or a stroke right we've agreed to that as a society yeah so every other emotion can also cause a physical ailment so right. so i'll when i see what's going on in their body it will go okay this is anger you know this is trapped fear this is, they didn't get the love they needed. This is from a childhood one from when you're a mother. I did one from someone else uh, the other day and it's something that's chronic. And I, I said, what happened at this age? Mm. And it was five. And they had just uh, had something come up for them that they were abused at that age mm -hmm. and they had shut it out and they didn't remember. And I said, well, this is the result of that tra trauma, mm -hmm. right? right? But I, I, I don't know her, but I, that's how I connect those things. And she was able, I said, it's gonna, you're going to work through this and you're going to start to move that. And I don't usually tell people that, but I was really adamant about it, you know? Yeah. And she, yeah. I'm getting, and she's working through it right now. And it's really beautiful. And she's not afraid of it anymore. She said, I said it out loud. I've never talked about this with anybody. It was right. a safe space to say it. There's no judgment. There's no judgment. I think love without judgment is the most beautiful thing that we can offer. Yeah, it absolutely right? is. Mm -hmm. So that's what I see. So with an ailment, I'll say, I can see what happened if it's just they tripped. Okay, I get that. But sometimes something's chronic or it's something that, you know, it's going on because of an emotional response. Okay. Because right? they're not having their feelings. So it's feeling, you have to feel it to free it. And if you don't, it will go internal and it will become a physical ailment. Just like a heart attack with stroke. You know what I mean? Sadness and anger with cancer. They, you know, they've, they've attached that to that as well. So, um, if you can recognize it and start feeling it, you can release that pain. You can get rid of that ailment. I'm not saying everything hundred percent because I know some things are diet, right? Some things are what we put in our body. Mm -hmm. Some things are just sometimes just uh, not being so lucky in life or having an issue with your genetics, but I still feel like we can work with that with what we put in our body because what we put in is what we get out. Right, you know? right. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Lots of times, a lot of things are emotional. And they can be released if you work through what you have and looked at, or you're not willing to work on. Mm -hmm. so. And so do you help them work through it or what would be, I guess I'm, wow, <laughs> I'm just taking it all in. So if somebody comes to you and you've identified, do you download typically like ways to help them work through it? Or do you have a like specific 100%. techniques that you like to use? 
Mm -mm. Everything is, uh, is tailored to that person. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a degree. I went to school to be a therapist. I didn't finish my schooling, but I, I went to school to be a therapist. And I don't really believe a lot of that really helped me in what I do, but I do have some things that um, people have heard before, right? So mm -hmm. they get comfortable with that. So they're techniques that, it, so those are very general. But I, um, by the time I'm done talking to somebody, to you for an hour, I kind of feel how they work, what would be uh, purposeful for them. And then we work on it. And, and sometimes, I did talk to somebody every other week for about six months and we worked and her life has changed around. And when she gets anxious, she can contact me and all these different things. But I would say, okay, I want you to do these three things. And when we talk, I want to see how it went, yeah. you know, and yeah. I check on people. I'll text them. How are you doing? How's it going? You know, it's not like, okay, cool. Thanks. And I'll see you later. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cause I'm invested too. And I'm healing with them. They're doing some work for me. <laughs> so I get away with some stuff that way, but yes, I do. Uh, it's tailored to the person, honestly. You know, I've been working on the hand I was given from very young age and I've been working on different things and I've tripped and I've, I've, I've tried new things and I've tried things. Some things work, some things don't, but with all of that, it's a toolbox that I, I offer to others and see if it works for them. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And it is a tailored, you know, downloaded information and then a combination of, like you're saying, things that people have heard of that or can traditionally be used in the healing settings. Do you have a favorite type of reading or, I mean, I know they're all so special, <laughs> but is there one that, that you really enjoy? Is it like mediumship or the medical animals or anything else you? I want to say after the reading with you going back, cause I've done uh, just intuitive readings and the, more of like the coaching readings late, uh, lately. Mm -hmm. or just what's going on. A lot of people call about relationships and, and those things. And we talk about the inner work that you have to do to make a successful relationship. Cause sometimes they call and they're like, but he, this, and I said, that's fantastic. But are you volunteering your time? Which is what I just went through myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, again, I think I go through it to help other people get through it. So, yeah. That happens. But, <laughs> yeah. So I think my favorite is the animals. I, I love animals. I love animals. I work in the pet industry and I, I want to touch and hug all of them. <laughs> so I think that's probably my favorite. I did a lot of medium work. Um, I like that. To be honest with you, that's where people challenge you the most, you yeah. know, um, and spirit will talk to you and say the same thing over and over and over again. It might even be, I like to paint my nails and they might say it 50 times until the person in front of me goes, oh, they did like to do their nails. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so that's the one I get challenged the most on because it, it's almost like they come to me. It's hard for them to believe. And so they want to prove that it's not real because it's scary for a lot of people, but it's just so beautiful. It's, it's just a flow, right? Of, mm -hmm. of dimension. Yeah. So um, I want to say animals. I like to, I like them all. The, the medical thing is amazing because then you can really help somebody. I just, that one blows me away still. So honestly, that's more of like, oh, that just happened, you right. know? Right. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know I if know. that was a good answer or not, but I, I think I enjoy doing all of them for different reasons. But if I can get involved with a pet, I love animals. So that's probably what I'll, you know, start focusing more again on since you and I spoke. Because, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was incredible. Well, and I was looking specifically for an animal communicator. So I didn't even know about your other services because you were referred to me. It's not like I, I'm like, okay, yep. You know, I met a friend, really trusted her. She referred to you. I'm like, okay. So I didn't even know about until after I, you're like, oh, and by <laughs> the way, I was like, oh my gosh, so amazing. So yeah, I feel you there. It's, you know, every session is really special and to see the transformation, it's just so rewarding as somebody that's, you know, an intuitive communicator and healer. And I love that you are so open with everything, like just really direct. And I can, you know, I can feel that I can feel how strong and sure you are. And it, and it feels to me like you've had, you have, you've had the gifts the whole time, but it, we hit these moments where we like really step into them. Mm -hmm. And to me, you just feel really sound and grounded. Like, whoa, you're there. You've been there for a long time. <laughs> and it's this <laughs> vibration of just so much trust. Like, oh yeah, she's going to take care of me. And if it's something I didn't know I wanted to hear or needed to hear, it'll come through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being in that safe space. And also you mentioned like that hug. So it feels as if, you know, being held to receive information. And then like you're mentioning, you don't just leave them here, have this information, you know, good luck working on it <laughs> and right. really help right. guide through. Mm -hmm. 
So how do people work with you? Do you work in person or remote? If somebody wanted a session? I do all of it. I do remote. I do in person. Uh, I have been known to come to people's houses and do it that way. I've had a couple experiences where I did a couple of them in one day. So I would do, I'd stay there like three hours and did one right after the other, okay. you know, um, which is okay. It's not, I'm not overwhelmed by that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, I do them video. I can do them over the phone. I would prefer video because I do like to connect. I like to see somebody. I like to connect the energy and I can in the video. I can in the phone, you know. Um, but I definitely like video or in person better. Yeah. Yeah. Especially you know? with the animals you loved. I mean, that just worked out so magically to have the video because just like two of the cats just kind of crept on the screen. They like literally just came from around the corner and you're like, Oh, hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, you know, just made that instant connection too. So that's wonderful. And where can people find you? I know we're going to put it below a link, but do you have um, a website or is it through social media? It would be social media right now. I am going to work on a website. You know, I, I had to come to terms with my self-confidence and I had to come to terms with the fact that this is, this isn't an option any longer, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, thanks to you and people like you and the people in the circle that I've started meeting, they're all telling me, well, wait, come on, let's do this. Like we need you, you know, which is so nice to hear. Um, so I'm going to get the website going. I definitely am at Instagram at Rochelle's guidance, you know, and um, you can message me there. I will have an attachment for appointments coming soon, probably by the time um, this, this airs. Yeah. yeah. And um, for right now, that's it. Yeah. That's how they'll get in touch with me. I'm very available. Um, I can always find time in that week as of right now um, to do something. And I work with your schedule. So I feel like when someone is calling and someone needs to talk to you, they need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. I need to talk to somebody and it's weeks out, it, it makes me a little uncomfortable by the time I talk to them. Obviously, I probably worked through it or I'm anxious or I've kind of turned off to the situation. That's my own anxiousness around needing something, instant gratification, right? Or that moment. Because uh, so I've, I'm just, be, I'm available for that now for others, you know? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice when you have that like flexibility and you're like, yes, I can meet you. Here we go. Let's do this. Let's get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get your website, when you do get it, I'll put it in show notes for everybody. Okay. I'm one of your cheerleaders over here. I'm really excited. Oh, you're so awesome. You're so I just, sweet. Oh, thanks. Yeah. No, I just knew I was like, I really need to have her on the show. And, and also I've had people ask me, you know, do you know any animal communicators? And I was like, I really don't. And also for the medical intuitive. And so here we go. This is going to be perfect. And I've, um, yeah, just aside from my own experience, heard so many beautiful things about your services. So thank you so much. Is there any final message you want to leave with our listeners? I just, I do want to say, um, and I'm going to say it once again, is that if, if your gut is talking to you, just breathe and give it a chance, listen to it, mm -hmm. practice baby steps and, and respond to your gut and not to your mind. So take that baby step and just do what your gut says. Listen to what your gut says. It could be something small, right? Like, right. I don't know what to give you an example. And then just start really building your confidence because our intuition is beautiful. We all have it. It's, it's like a muscle. We have to develop it. We have to trust it, right? We have to grow it. And that would be my message is that don't doubt yourself. You're, you know, you don't have to say afterwards, oh, I knew that was going to happen. You can actually start taking baby steps to listen to it and move forward with it. And that's um, what I had to learn to save me, you know, some pain. And then I still, I try to deny it, you know, in my own life, my own experiences, I, I go to my head a lot, you know, but um, just listen to your gut. That's my message, really. Thank you. Yeah, that's so important, especially I think the longer that we ignore it, the stronger it becomes. And then like you mentioned, we kind of kick ourselves in the butt like, gosh, I knew that. Why didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> right. So next time that you get this little instinct or that tightening, your gut's talking to you. Uh, how about we listen to it? I totally agree. That's such good information. And a lot of this, and at least for me, what I've learned in walking in the spiritual world of healing and communication, it's like, I wasn't taught this, you know, as a child, mm -hmm. right? 
in school, not so much by my community either. We had different language around certain things. So sometimes it might feel really new, like we're retraining ourselves. And here as an adult, what? <laughs> okay, something that feels somewhat basic, but it will make such a significant difference. So I'm really happy you brought that up. Thank you so much. And you're welcome. And I, the last thing I want to say is that it's like a language. When you learn a language, you you read it, you try to speak it, right? Yeah. And then everything that you think you have to translate into that language. Then eventually you start to think in the language, right? And the three steps of learning a new language is the same as a behavior and a way of being and all those things. You have to translate it for a while until it becomes your way of thinking. And so don't give up on yourself if it doesn't feel natural or normal at first, right? Yeah. You just keep practicing it will, yeah. you know? And it really, it just changes everything. And, and when you fall back for a second, don't think it's done. You just pick back up and do it again, you know? Yeah, I love that. Thank you. That's so encouraging. Absolutely. And if you're questioning, like here are two women that have <laughs> experienced it and it, it works. So uh, thank you so much, Michelle. It was so great. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. And we'll see everybody again. Well, thank you all for being here. And well, I hope to see you again on the next episode. Bye. Bye. 